Man, after 72 episodes, you think I would know when we were live. I have to – and Big D, you got to get your wave down. Okay, everybody, <laughs> it's time. The stick is gone. We are here. I think it's Friday. It, Minnie, is it Friday? Friday? Big D, is it noon? It's noon on Friday. Woo! So that means one thing. Boy, i gotta, I got to – Calm down. No, <laughs> I'll never calm down. It's Festool Friday, and that means it's Festool Live. So welcome, everybody. We missed you all week. Boy, did we have a lot of meetings this week planning next year. But also, I'll give you a hint. In November, we're doing another live on the road. I'll give you another hint. It's the state begins with O and ends in O, and it's high in the middle. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hey, Minnie, you got a guess on that one? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Ohio. So we're coming to Ohio in November. So there's the first clue. And as we're leading up to it, you'll know exactly where we'll be. Okay, everybody, I'm going to introduce the room. Over here, we have Big D. Hey, everybody. On the board. <laughs> Over here, on the camera. Do we ever get a picture of Chris? Sometimes. Sometimes. We have Chris, the unit, Cybert. Okay. Over here, we have Min Min. Down here, we have Sparky. Sparky, you sleeping? Come on, Spark. Oh, my God. He reminds me of a yellow dog in uh, Funny Farm. He's a good you remember that? dog. Oh, my God. With Chevy Chase, it was a great movie. Okay. And we have online today, we have Garrett Sato. And he's also the one-all, beat-all. <laughs> he's hating me right now for answering all your festival questions. Okay. Hey, and Big D just told me on my battery pack here, I have 13.9 hours. So I think I can go, many think I can go 14 hours talking? Easy. Oh, easy. Okay. So today's episode, and let me grab it, is called Lost in the Catalog. This is our North America catalog. Okay. And this is our 2021. It's 2021, men? Yes. Okay. So, and by the way, tell us where you're from. Okay, it's called Lost in a Catalog. But I'm looking at my board and my notes over here, and I got to call out a group here at Festool, and I want to thank them. I want to thank them from the bottom of my hat for doing a fantastic job. They've always done a fantastic job, but they continue to do it. They've never missed a day during this whole hoo ha pandemic. And I'm going to tell you, it's our warehouse staff. They are fantastic. We love them. Keep up the good work. Uh, Steve, Wade Boy, you're the bomb. Joe, the drizzle, shem fizzle, you rock, bro. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Now, lost in the catalog. Okay. Over the years, people would come up to me and go, hey, what's this? Hey, what's this? When are you coming out with this? Hey. What's this? All right. And this is the first episode of Lost in the Catalog because I am going to cover some of those accessories that go unnoticed in our catalog online, whether here in the States or in Canada or also around the world. And hopefully, if I'm doing my job okay, it'll, I'll explain them properly. So I think in a previous episode, I should have done a little bit more research. Follow me over here, Chris. Um, I talked about this. This is the FS Rapid Clamp. I think maybe in track saws I did. And <clears throat> when we first look at this, you got a big old uh, trigger here on the handle. And as I pull it, this goes out. You're going to notice it's not a square face. It's actually got a, an act face. And here's what we call the stop. This is the handle. This is the stop. And it's the FS Rapid Clamp. And I'm sure Garrett's in the other room there telling you what the part number is. But here's the release. Okay. And when I first saw this, I went, that reminds me of those uh, quick clamps I've always had. You know, you get them at any home center or whatever, any store. And uh, I think at one time they were ma made by one company and it was bought by another company and then everybody started making them. But basically it was, it was designed off a, a, a caulking gun. Okay, uh, the original uh, prototype. And it's a quick clamp. So, the way you put this on, you have this um, T-nut and it goes into the track like this. Okay, just like this. And I always, if there's a hesitation, I just lift it up and I push it in. And then I lock it back. The next part is the stop. 
and I'm going to call it out again. It's got an arc to it. So if you've ever used those other clamps, they got a 90 degree flat face. Here, because of the way we arc this, you can lock off a taper. It doesn't have to lock off a 90. You can actually use this to do what? Do some doors. Do it while the doors are still hanging. But once again, I push it on, and there you go, and lock it in. It's pretty simple. But I want to give you a little tip on it. Sometimes this goes on a little too tight, sometimes a little too loose. I see people taking this and turning it, and this is sticking forward of here. Basically what I've created, look, is a big quick clamp. The release tab is right here. But I had somebody in Canada once say, I love this. This would be a perfect solution if the handle didn't come all the way down. Well, check it out. I could take this and rotate the handle. So that solved the problem already, and guess what? It still works. And there's your release. So I wanted to show you that. And many, you know, it's really tough. Because when you're writing that, and I hear you behind that whiteboard chuckling, I kind of want to know what's so funny. But that's okay. I'm good. I'll know afterwards. They're, really funny. They're funny today. They're always funny. You guys are always funny. Thanks. Okay. So here's the tip I want to show you how to adjust this. And this... This is a way to adjust a lot of things. And I've showed you on the Domino 500. I've showed you on the rail clamp for the MFT3. That if you need adjustment in the tension of a lever or a knob, it can be as easy as taking a posi drive screwdriver once again. Make sure it's a Festool screwdriver, posi drive. And when I put that on here like this, okay, I'm just going to go like this because that's where it's tight. Okay, I'm just going to loosen it like this. And once again, if I want more tension or less tension, I can take that right off. And you see how that's like a cog design? I can take that and move it back if need be. Or forward if I need more tension or less tension. And I think that's about perfect for me. I'm going to take that, readjust it, and I can still slip it on and off the rail real easy like this. And you see, and now I got plenty of tension. So if you're getting kind of a little frustrated sometimes, always make sure you adjust that first. Okay? Okay. Oh, hopefully that made sense and that was a better explanation. Now, I know this is like a half a door. I know this is where the doorknob goes. But say you need to do tapers on doors. I have this one already set up. I'll loosen it to show you right here. Okay? And say I got to i got to do a mark right here. Let's get it a little bolder. Okay? And say you got to... You can actually put this right on the door. All right? But say you got to cut a taper to match what? To make sure it looks level with your threshold or your floor. You want to do a taper. You can put that right on the door. Do your line up like this with your track. See that? Look. Right here. And it still holds. Now, you can use the regular Festool clamps, but you can't really do that when you're doing the door while it's still hanging. And I wanted to point that out to you now. He just set it up, and I'm going to show you right now. This is... Okay, so I am kind of showing off because this is the blade that comes with the new TSC 55 KEB. And I'm going to tell you. Man, I wish this camera had feel -a vision That's one of the smoothest cuts, and it is effortless. I was talking to somebody this week, and they were freaking out. They switched from their regular TS-55 to their TS-55 KEB, their cordless, and they were blown away ripping walnut with it, and that was, uh, I believe, six quarter. Okay, so I think that wraps up the first accessory that kind of gets lost in the catalog. Now, <clears throat> this is the one that definitely gets lost in the catalog. Spock, are you paying attention? Because we're coming over here to see you. All right. So, <clears throat> I know this is a short run of chair, okay? But I'm just going to put on my laser here. Mm, let me put on my laser right here. Okay, so I got my, I got my straight line laser there, and I want to put this up here. Okay, just like this. And what's the problem always when you're doing something like this? Look. You're trying to balance it like this and trying to hold it. And if it's a really long run, this thing wants to come down on you. It'd be nice, it would be nice if we had 
somebody to hold that other end for us. <laughs> okay, so this is called, I, I, I think we call this the wings. Yep. Okay, um, and the way to adjust it, I'm just going to bring it over here, Chris, so we can adjust it. Okay. You have these, as I call, tabs like this, and you adjust it to the thickness of your material. So I usually take it over here and go just like this. I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll. All right? Okay? This is how you take it on and off the wall. There's a little arrow there. But don't try to take it off like this. You can actually go like that in the front. That's why we have those arrows up and down. So the nice thing about this is now I don't have to go at if I'm a pro and I need someone and I'm by myself in a, um, a job site. I don't have to go ask the plumber or the electrician to go hold this for me. I don't have to find somebody else from another trade. I can do it all by myself because, of course, I already have a Festool dust extractor that goes in here like this. Okay. This is the beauty of Bluetooth. Check it out. All right, <laughs> I could take this like this, bring it right in. That holds it there while I come to this end. Look, I could take this, I could tack this in now, right? Just like this. Come over, I can do my adjustment. Look, and then I can take this right off and get the rest of it. Is that simple? These are called CT wings. It goes unnoticed so many times. And everybody will pull me aside and go, what the heck are these? Now, I'll take it a step further. Chris, come on in here. Say, see how this gets awkward? And someone said, this gets awkward when I'm doing maybe, and I know this is kind of a exaggeration, but say I'm doing a light bar on the bottom of a long run of upper cabinets. All right, I could take this, and I'm just going to pretend this is my light bar like this, but I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to take the right angle off. I'll take it like this, and I can take this, and that can suck, I mean, hold it right up here like this as I come to the end of the run, and I could tack this in, tack this in, tack this in, Take that off and work it. So it works in the vertical position. You have the right angle. It just makes it so much easier on the job site. And yes, it's basically having a third hand on the job site. So there you go. I wanted to point that out to you. How are we doing, guys? Good? Doing good. All right. So when I was looking through the catalog, <coughs> I wanted to talk about this because we don't talk about it enough. And this is a great accessory for your OF-1010. I don't want to say it's self-explanatory in the catalog, but it's called a trammel point, and a lot of people don't know how to use this. So over the years, I found, because I use this, and over the years, I have found little tips and tricks on using this, and I'm going to give you a little bit of math in there as I do this. Uh, you can get it as exact as you want or rough as you want. But basically, this is a 4 millimeter trammel point with a point right there. And it's just a bar that slips into the OF-1010. Um, I'm going to leave this one right here. Okay. Now, you just got to know what your radius is. Or, okay, so let's do a little bit of math. Okay, so many of you going to help me with this. Okay, here's, come on, Mrs. Metric, come on. Okay, so here we go. What is half a 300? Okay, so if we want a 300 millimeter diameter, we have to know what? The radius or the radii. So you always divide it in half, the majority of the time. This will allow you, what, to cut circles, but also axe. All right, and, and by the way, I did every one of these <laughs> with the OF-1010 and the trammel point. So... Um, let me show you some tips and tricks. Now, I'm going to call out some numbers as I go through this. I installed a 10 millimeter bit. So when I'm cutting something that is a known diameter, I divide it in half. But if I'm using a 10 millimeter bit, Manny, what's half a 10? So you've got to add 5 or 10 to it. So what I'm going to do is I get the 10 millimeter bit in there, and I'm going to zero it out so I can show you from the top how this goes on. You have a couple of knobs here, and this is the way I like to set it up. I'll take it like this, okay? I'll take my trammel point, 
and I'll put it in here like this, okay? And what I'll do is I know, and hopefully, Big D, I need you to get right in here. That's my point. Now, if I need a, 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 a super exact measurement, I'd probably put a, a script bit in there, you know, with a, or a pointed bit. All right, but I know I can get that right there, and I know there's my trammel, okay? So if I needed something, let's just say, well, here's what we got to do. Are we cutting a hole to its exactness or the wheel? So that's why you got to know the diameter of your bit, and if we know half a 10 is 5, so if I need the wheel, okay, the insert, okay, I need to set it. If I am, if I need it to be exactly uh, whatever, um, I need to know subtract either five or if it's the whole, I need to do what? I need to add five. I hope you're following me on this. You just got to know the diameter bit. And, and now I'm back to doing template guides. But look, see that right there? That right there is the center, and there's the center of my trammel. So I'm going to take it like this, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set it at 55. Because guess what I want? An exact what? 100? No, an no. exact wheel. Oh. Because I have to have that. So I'm going to take that like this. And Big D, can you get this from up top? Yep, we're there. Okay, and I'm going to bring it right over. And I'm going to match my point right there to 55. And I have it. Okay? And then I'm going to lock what? My knob. So... Here's why, th and here's a tip I'm going to give you. If you got a lot of these to cut, and you got the right increment, I always do this. Look, I take it, and right on the side of my base, I make a mark right here. So now I know I could take this on and off, and I'll get a rough adjustment super quick. Hope that makes sense. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to place in a, I oh, wait a minute. <coughs> you have to drill a four millimeter hole, okay, and make sure you're using whoop, 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 a Festool drill with a whoop, 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 four millimeter Festool drill bit. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, I don't know about you guys, but this never gets old for me. I just love doing this. Okay, so I'm going to set that in there. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set depth. I'm going to bring depth down here. I'm going to be at zero. And now I got to set the depth exactly so I want to go down five millimeters so what I'm gonna do is let me just look in here and I'm gonna get something I know is exactly five millimeters ha 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 domino and I'm gonna take that I'm on the lowest setting and there I go okay I think I covered everything and I think the dimensions, and you can look this up in a catalog. Garrett's probably already telling you because you probably are asked. You can go down to 150 millimeter diameter. So that means it's a 75, the shortest, all the way to 750, 760 diameter. So half of that is, I would say, 380, correct? Yeah, now you're talking. So there you go. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to bring it up like this. I, I want to make sure that my pressure is on the base. And that I have that in there like that. Let's hook up the dust extraction. And I can talk a little bit about router safety. Always remember, before you put the power on, make sure the switch is off, is cycled off. So let's take that on there. And maybe I can make a swoop here. Whoopsie. And make sure when you put a plug-in cord on... Uh-oh. You guys thought I wouldn't get caught. I just got caught. Am I still good? Yep, you're good. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get this right sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I kind of like it that way. Okay. So, we looking good? Yep. Okay. So, I'm man, we got to work on that cord again, guys. It's getting caught on my pouch. All right. Here we go. Oh, okay. Let's get going down by the river. All right. Good. Now, when I'm running this, okay, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go five millimeters in. I don't want any catching points. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to plunge. Did I do it okay? Oh! Whew. What's that? 
Okay. I, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Do you guys get the gist of that? So now you can cut circles. You can cut axe. Garrett, hey, but, hey, 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 straight radio. Everybody, that's Garrett Sato right there. He's coming in from the other room. He's our Q&A guy. And he wanted to know, Ian, Ian, have you watched every single Festool Live Live? I think you have. Thank you, Ian, from East Yorkshire. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to put, oh, nope. <laughs> Garrett, I would say I'm going to put it in there, and here's the situation. This has dual locking clamp, and it won't clamp. So what I have seen people do before, because this is the central clamping knob. What, uh, let me just do this, because I'm going to take this off really quick. Okay. And I'm going to put this in here like this. Okay, now watch. Will it hold now? So I saw somebody once say something like, if you put another trammel point in there, it'll lock. It does not lock. There's too much play. I'm so sorry about that, Ian. It doesn't work on the 1400. All right. So as I went through this, I went a little too fast. Because I got to show you another application I was shown not too, too long ago. Okay. So this is the trammel point. Okay. That's the CT wings. Boy, look how accurate that is. Boy, who made that? No, my. Okay. Oh my God. So <laughs> here's a great application for that FS rapid clamp. With the LR32, you have these. And I showed this to Garrett last year when we were building in December a lot of these cabinets. We hooked it up with an LR, uh, with the FS rapid clamp because we're constantly, what, punching holes with the LR32 and using these clamps that come with it. Where this really speeds it up. Now, I'm going to show you how I set this up. Normally, you use two end stops, but I cut this perfectly at 768, which is the visible by 32 millimeter so I only have to put one end stop I put it 16 up and out I could take this like this see that I have my rapid clamp on there and I could take my parallel edge guides put them on here like this that's 37 millimeter for them the edge boy every chance I get a chance to talk about LR32 I do and now I got my FS rapid clamp on there and guess what I'm already set up so that speeds up the operation it makes it wicked quick and there you go. Wow. Hey, let's see if this is the fastest one so far. Nope. <laughs> we did 20 minutes today. I'm excited. Um, are there any more questions? Nope. I guess Garrett's got all of them. Wow. I haven't finished this quick in a long time. This is kind of fun. I guess we got to go to lunch. Okay. So, hey. hey. Is, is that Jerry from Toledo, Ohio? Is it? Jerry, I miss you, buddy. Hey, we also have Columbus, Ohio. Minnie, who do we get on the other side? We got anybody? Oh. <laughs> Woo! Somebody told me uh, when I was over at um, in St. Louis, they said, our favorite part's the end when you call our names out. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Patrick from Pinner or Dinner? Pinner, London. Hastings, Minnesota. Kurt from Surrey, Wisconsin. Joe from Waseca, Illinois. Ian, there you are from East Yorkshire. Whitestone, New York, you're always with us. Tom and Kelly from Eatonton, Georgia, you're always with us. Yolarvi, Finland, you're there. Grove is, oh my God. Downers Grove, Illinois, you're always there. Lausanne, Switzerland, thank you for being there for us. Eden, New York. Steve from Isle of Bermuda, you're always there. <coughs> Nova, Novato. California. Hey, Sparky moved. Be careful, Chris. Oh, my God, he moved. Perth, West Australia, the Netherlands, Denver, Colorado, Bozeman, Montana, Johnny O. Atco from New Jersey. Okay, Southern California, Austin, Texas, we're coming there next year. Mechanicsville, Virginia, James from Somerset, Kentucky, Jefferson City, Missouri, Boucherville, Quebec, Tallinn, Estonia, Elk, WW, El Mini, what's this? 
Elk Woodworking, and you know it. Go Red Sox. Yeah, baby. They said we wouldn't get by Tampa Bay. Yeah, right. Richard from Belgium. Marin from the French Alps. France Marie Sierra Brazil. So close. <laughs> France Marie Sierra Brazil. Better. Don from Albuquerque. Jo Gordon from Edinburgh. You're always there. Houston, Texas. Elton, England. Yep, I think that's right. Doug from Zionsville. How you doing, Doug? Buzzards Bay. That just sounds cool. Cape Town, South Africa. Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. There's no other place. Suntan Valley, Arizona. Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. You're always there. Ray Wood from Olympia, Washington. Jeff from Bloomington. What's that say? 60 IU? Go IU. Oh. <laughs> Go IU. Evergreen, Colorado. Plano, Texas. Pool from Dorset, UK. Los Angeles. I'll actually be out there in a couple weeks. Jim from Portland, Oregon. Is that Hong Kong? Again. That's cool. Union, Maine. Fenton, Michigan. Nicole from Italy. That reminds me. Judah and Sailor from Plainfield, Indiana. Chef Shannon, what's up, Ambrosio? Ottawa, California. Virginia. Georgetown, Texas. Holderness, New Hampshire. Toledo, Ohio. Phoenix. I just found out it's Phoenix. I used to always call it Pahonix. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Minnie corrected me. Chris from Malta. How are you? Live from Malta. I can't wait to say that. Jared. How you doing, buddy? I haven't seen you in a while. From Festool Repair. <clears throat> yeah, Colt, Washington. Salt Lake City, Utah. Seansville, Virginia. Wow, Jeff from Whitefish, Montana. Kelowna, BC. I love that. I've been there a couple times. Yizza from Para. I'm going to say this better. Paramaribo, Suriname. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Yes, indeedy. Cinnamon, New Jersey. I'm getting better at that, ain't I? Yes, you are. are. Aren't, I? Aren't, aren't I? Paul from Reading, Berkshire, England. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Compton, New Hampshire. <laughs> Minnie's laughing at me again, or laughing. Chef Shannon and Ambrosia. Okay. <laughs> Mifflin Town, Pennsylvania. Zaza from Hungary. How you doing, Zaza? Hungary, Budapest, Calgary. Somis, California. Okay. Yeah, yep, nope, 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 nope. We left it up there. And I didn't I, I didn't go and look up pronunciation on this. Hi, Russia. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, everybody come in here. Let's zoom in. Okay, we've called everybody off. Okay, Minnie, you do it first. Russia. Chris, you. Really? Big D, you read it. Come on. Um, right over here. Come on. Wow. That's a good one. Srednu Rask. Rask. Ha! Rask! Russia, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. And if, oh, of course I did. Uh, by the way, that took me. Hey, Rob, I think Cinnaminson took me like three weeks. <laughs> so don't feel bad, shredding a lot, Rusk. <laughs> Russia. Hey, we love you. We love every one of you who tuned in. We love every one of you who stayed to the end to hear us tell you how much we love you. We can't say it enough. We. This is the best hour of the week, ain't it, Min Min, Chris? Big D. Indeed. Spocky. Well, All right. <laughs> and I want to thank Garrett Sato again. Next week, <laughs> weather permitting. Okay. I, a lot of people have asked me for this over the years. We're going to do it live. And we're going to go outside with live. Right from the training center, the back door. We've already worked out the logistics. We're just going to pray for good weather and you're going to see a really cool application. Boy, do I'm going to do it a cliffhanger or what. So stay <laughs> tuned for next week. And <sighs> thanks. Right, guys? Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Spocky, you want to wrap this up? Live from Lebanon, Indiana, Spocky says this is a wrap.